live. TJ Lavin, what is up? How's it going, man? I'm friggin' beat. How are you? <laughs> I'm beat too, man. I'm a little tired myself. Yeah, how's your day been? Yeah, I, I've been walking and running and just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get that CVS body right now. So I got to walk and run and can't eat. And I, you know, I got to try and get a little bit more fit, man, because I, I let myself get real fat in between shows. So <laughs> I, like, you got to you gotta come back down to earth and be like, all right, man, no more ice cream, no more cookies. <laughs> Dude, I party like when it comes to that. It's amazing how fast you can go backwards with how long it, it takes to make progress. It sucks so bad. And the older you get, the harder it is. Oh, I'm sure. Like, you don't dude, look I'm, bad, though. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I, I try. I mean, it's because I stay on it, you know what I mean? The mm. whole time. So, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's the thing. Like, I, this weekend, I ate pizza for the first time in like six months. It's like instant, yeah. instant gain five pounds. Yeah, it sucks, dude. <laughs> but what can you do? All the stuff that tastes good. I understand why dudes just let go and be like, screw it and just get fat. You know? <laughs> yeah. I get it. I fully get it. It's so hard to stay not, not, I mean, not out of control. I mean, I'm, I'm like heavy right now for me, but. Like, if somebody saw me walking on the street, they'd be like, oh, he's normal. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Dude. And, and you know, but, damn, it's tough. Oh, for sure. And everything that tastes good is horrible for you. Why is that? Why is it like that? I don't know. It sucks. Yeah, it definitely sucks. Dude, it sucks so bad. Like, how would it be if cookies and cupcakes and ice cream was the best thing for you oh my god i'd be the most in shape person that's ever existed same dude i'd be so ripped (laughs) oh god so i've been dying to ask you this question all day because this podcast spawned from literally a video that went up yesterday where i did a reaction to the 2000 gravity games dirt finals which you won and I said in that video, TJ, I don't think you'll ever see this, but if you do, let's do a podcast. And here we are the next day. How did you see it? I, I Somebody sent it to me, and they said, dude, check this out. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, I loved it, man. Like, I was like, dude, this is so badass. I watched all 20 minutes or something of it, 18 minutes, and I watched the whole thing, top to bottom everybody's runs i can remember what we were thinking yeah and i remember what it was like and and like i remember carrie hart was on the deck with us and he was my roommate at the time so it was it was so fun because i was like we were sitting on my roll in and Mm -hmm. he was on a backflip at the gravity games and i was like i'm gonna win it and he was like all right let's do that let's do it i was like all right sweet so then we did that and i was like well all right i did mine now it's time for you to flip He's like, all right. So he did. And that, that set the world on fire. Like, Dude. Remote. So funny. That's insane because somebody uh, left a chat in here before we even started saying, uh, it was Johnny Jetson. He said, TJ is the godfather of the FMX backflip behind the scenes on the low. Yeah. That's so funny, man. Because the the real story behind that is, is Carrie and I went to Woodward for a night, one night. We yeah. traveled all the way, all night, all day to get to Woodward. Flip, did a bunch of flips in the foam, and and I taught him flips on a BMX. And then we took it to Resi, flipped on Resi, and I think he might even did it on the real box that night. And it was like, D- I'm done, I'm good. I was like, all right, let's go. He's like, all right, you want to go home? He goes, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. We pinned it home, dude. Like it was so crazy. Wow. Like, I, think, I think we panicked out of there in one day, like we were out. That's and, and, wild. Yeah, man. It, it was so far, and it was so cold, and it was just me and him in the warehouse. And so that was that. And then years later, Metzger called me and was like, TJ, like, I really want to learn this flip. And I was like, well, we don't have to go to Woodward for it. I go, we should just go to the sand dunes, and we'll take a FMX ramp mm-hmm. on a sand dune so that it's a little steeper, and then it's a step up. So you're stepping up to the sand dune and that's how you do it 
and not get hurt. He goes, really? I go, yeah. He goes, you want to meet me out there? I go, sure. What time? He goes, 5 a.m. I go, all right, I'll be there. That was on the same, like, we, we talked about it. And then the same week, he called me. He's like, hey, I'll meet you at 5 a.m. at Dumont Dunes, which is two and a half hours away from me. Yeah. And hours away from him. So we met there in the morning, set up the ramp, did the damn thing. He did a flip, landed, like, cased the whole thing, <laughs> and tipped over and broke something on his bike. It was like, I did it. I know what to, I know what to do now. Like, it's already done. Wow. And he went home and did 40 of them on the double. No way. That's so sick. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, it was really cool. And he just he set the world on fire that day. And, like, like, forever, everybody was like, oh, my God, that was so crazy. And then no one even, like, knows that I met him out there. Like, in, yeah. in some documentary or something that he did about it, like, no one knows anything about it. I don't even think they know that me and Carrie, like, flew out to Woodward for a one-night training session secret training session for him you know what i mean it was it was so funny yeah so that was the same gravity games as the the thing that i did the video on yeah no shit that's so that just yeah because i won that year so yeah yeah because he and i talked sat on the rolling and i was like i'm gonna win this year and he's like i go dude there I, I gotta win this year like i don't know why i didn't win last year and he's like i was like man i just should have just should have put it together I, I should win this thing. And he goes, I'm going to do a backflip. And I was like, what? Come again? And he was like, flip. And I was like, well, I'll teach you how to do it. It's real easy. And then he was like, all right. So then we did it. And that was it. Man, I miss that element of BMX. And just like, I, I don't know if it still exists in freestyle motocross or anything else. But the element of like something like Gravity Games or X Games is coming up. And there's people who've been like working on this trick for a whole year and then x games or something like gravity games with that backflip that's where they throw it down and the whole world gets to see it for the first time yeah yeah i i did a double flip uh at x games one year and try i tried a double flip got knocked out for five minutes but i that was that was my trick that and then the, the other one was in 97 X Games when I won. One of the years I won, I did a tail whip. And I never even landed a tail whip until that day, mm -hmm. until that night. At the 97 X Games, I started practicing it on the deck and jumping to pedals. And I think it was like, I think it was Colin Winkleman. Me, Colin Winkleman, and Eric Deshaw from Vegas uh -huh. drove together. So it was me, Colin, and Eric drove together down to San Diego and then I was like practicing tail whips and I would jump and then land onto the bike and then do the tail whip and land onto the bike so I could picture myself jumping and landing on the bike because I was like man like this jump is so big and scary like I'm nervous dude like I'd already done a double truck suey on the thing and like did some badass tricks on it and then I was like dude I'm gonna tail whip that monster yeah. right now for the for the win for the go and that was it and that was it dude yeah i feel like that certain little bit of that is missing from bmx at least these days just because oh, yeah. it's like the way contests are judged you can't just be sending it like that nah nah it it, it definitely is missing a little bit of love like it, it is a weird it's a weird thing man because i'm seeing so many robotic dudes out there that are just I, and, and they're incredible, dude. I'm not oh, yeah. taking away from them, dude. Like, their their warm up run, first run of the day, is 30 times harder than any final run I ever did. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So, except for when I did some stuff in 2004 X Games, I I three whipped the biggest set I ever did in my life. So, like, I I challenged one of those new new school dudes to do something like that, mm -hmm. like whipping a big ass set of doubles. I don't think they could because the bikes are so light. You know? <laughs> so, so they would just get lost in the wind and maybe just end up in LA, LA stadium somewhere. But yeah, yeah. Dude, it's honestly like our bikes were so heavy. The jumps were so big and so steep. And like at that gravity games that you, that you like called, I, like that, those were transfers back and forth that I was doing. Like right. the fancy cup transfer that I did 
for the fans, like for the for the like the final run when I already won. Terry was like, "All right, dude, send it, send that thing now." Like I, I was like, "All right, I'll send it." Like you just like I mean, we painted send it on the ramp, me and Fuzzy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like like it was so fun. Like nobody gave a shit. We were just sending it like yeah. as hard as we could, and and just if you re- ended up winning, cool. If you didn't, cool. Like. Just keep it moving, dude. Do the gnarliest stuff that you could do. Yeah, and like when I was watching that, I just couldn't help but feel like if they took that BMX triple challenge thing that 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 they've been doing at the Supercross races, and they just took that same amount of dirt but made a course like what you were riding in that, because those jumps are so massive. You could literally make six jumps out of those three if they were just a little bit shorter and maybe not 30 foot gaps on each one and make something amazing out of it yeah with berms and rollers mm-hmm. I, mean, I built the courses we had rollers everywhere yeah and like we had so many rollers and and so many like little places to pump and like gain speed yeah and gain momentum with no pedals like you didn't ever have to even remotely pedal when when i built the course you know what i mean so yep. like, like like I loved it when we had to super crank at the last jump too. That was fun too. Yeah. Because I raced, so I was like fast, and I could like spin, you know. Mm-hmm. And if these couldn't spin, they're just chopping wood. They're like hating life. But then like I would come around the berm and catch a little heat, and then just like it'd be on forty four sixteen. See you later. Yeah, yeah, it was sick to see how uh, a couple of those runs. I think it was one of Nyquist's runs where he messed up and then just cranked as hard as he could around that berm and then hit the jump and still sent it on the last one. And Nasty did too. Nasty would try that too. Like he could really pedal. Nasty raced as well. So the double backflip, yeah. Yeah, he tried to double flip that little thing. That was a tiny little jump, dude. Like it was brutal. Yeah, it's so crazy. So was there I mean that video that I was reacting to only had the finals in it and it seemed like it only had certain people's runs too because it seemed like there's more people there on bikes than they were in the video but either yeah. way what i don't know if that was the whole tv show or not i'm not sure but i do know there were a lot more people there joey garcia was there you know a few of the heavy hitters uh, every every dude in the final was a heavy hitter every dude in the final on the deck was like crazy like could have won you know oh and, yeah so like it was so fun. It was so fun, and that's that's the most thing I miss about like doing contests is that you know those those feelings were amazing. Oh yeah. So I mean, other than the the backflip thing with uh, Carrie, was there anything else about that contest specifically that you remember just being awesome? Um, yeah. Like, I had a girlfriend there at the time, and and. Uh, her name was Siobhan, and she was really sweet. What a sweet girl. And, and, and I remember I, I went shopping for her the day before because I knew that I was going to win the contest and win $20,000. Whoa. <laughs> That's how confident I was. Like, wow. It was so stupid. Like, I, I went and spent, like, probably, like, $300 or something crazy. Back then, like, that was, like, more money than I could ever imagine. Mm-hmm. You know, 200 bucks or 300 bucks. And I like bought her a bunch of like clothes and like cool stuff, and 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 like put it in the closet for her when she came, because she was coming all the way from Las Vegas, and and I got her a plane ticket and all these cool things, you know, back then. And I was like, I was just like tripping because I knew that I was gonna win, and I knew like deep down I was in my heart of hearts I was like, dude, I have to win this thing, like I got it, and yeah. then made it happen. It was sick. I mean, sometimes, though, you just have those things where you just feel like you know. Is there any other examples of that where you just kind of knew something was going to happen and then it did? Yeah, 97X Games, I knew. 99X Games, I knew. Mm. And 95 King of Dirt, I knew. Wow. Yeah, those those are the, like, the four main bangers that I was like, dude, there's no stopping me. And then, and then there was like one contest in Huntington Beach, California. Um, that was it was the finals of the King of Dirt yeah. series, and and I knew what place I had to get. I knew what I had to do. Me and Fuzzy did the math a million times all the way to Huntington Beach. He told me like everything I needed to do because I 
I drove everywhere, so Fuzzy would drive down to Vegas, and then we'd drive together there. Mm-hmm. Then we're driving on our way there, and he's like, you, all you got to do is this, this, this. I go, all right, cool. So so he did that a million times, told me that a million times. So I did exactly what he said, and then they called Chris Duncan to win, to find the motorcycle. And I was like, what the hell? Like, there's no way. Like, I know I won that. And then I go, ah, whatever. And I didn't even, like, trip or protest or, like, you know, no, count those points. You know, I didn't do none yeah. of that. I just left. And then all the way home, Fuzzy goes, dude, you won. I don't know what you're doing, dude. Why are we leaving? And I was like, nah, dude, like, whatever, man. It's all good. He's like, no, nah, dude. I was like, dude, did you, did you see Chris? He was so happy. Like, it's all good. No worries, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's all good. He, and then a week later, they called me. And they were like, TJ, where are you at? I was like, I'm in Las Vegas. And he's like, listen, I got to really start with the apology. I'm really sorry, but you won the King of Dirt. Like, you won. And I was like, yeah, no, me and Fuzzy knew that. He goes, <laughs> why did he say anything? I go, because it was just like, you know, whatever, dude. It's kind of weird and just like, yeah. It's just like, I don't want to look like a sour grape, dude. And I was like, yeah, it's, yeah, fuck it. It was good. It was all it was all good. No worries. I won the contest that day, and I, I did my thing. It was good. And he goes, no, dude, you won the whole thing. You won the whole thing. You got to go get your motorcycle. And I was like, ooh. That's going to be hard. And he's like, no, no, no. We called Chris already. He's ready for you. No problem. And I was like, all right. So I drove down to Huntington Beach, and I go to Nasty's house because him and Nasty live together. And there's holes in the wall. Oh, no. And I was like, I go, what is this? What are all these holes in the wall? He goes, I freaked out a little bit. And then I go. And I was like, holy shit. Oh my god, I'm glad I didn't I'm glad I'm not the one that told you. I'm so sorry, Chris. He's like, It's okay, it's not your fault. And he I, I go, Did you know that I won? He goes, Yeah. I was like, Oh, all right. So he he was gonna like just sweep it under the rug too. And I was like, Yeah, whatever, who cares? Wow. I mean, that's pretty nuts that you had the feeling like you that you knew you were gonna win and then you did and then that happened and then it still ended up being that you in the end won. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. And then, and then uh, I, I won the um, the Daredevil. No, no, no. Yeah, I won a Daredevil of Dirt once, and I knew that I was going to win that. But, like, I, I had a feeling, you know, a gut feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, then one time I I, I uh, won the straight jacket. From that oh, the CFB, series. yeah. Freaking Biker Series. Yeah. And that, that was awesome. That was, like, probably, like, one of my – favorite things to win because everybody was everybody in that contest and the section was sick like downhill crazy big and and we would hear like all the campers when we were going down that section they would be like going uh, <laughs> as we were going down it it just kept getting louder and louder and the tricks are getting bigger and bigger and more scary and it was just so fun man we and then we after the contest we sessioned for like four hours like trying to do 360 after 360 all the way down them and flip after flip all the way down them and like the craziest lines me nyquist and like 10 other dudes just sessioned them for days and that's like the best session that i ever had on my bike hell yeah one of my yeah. uh one of my buddies who's uh, grew up local to here won one of those cfb straight jackets nice who chris markham oh sick yeah, I don't remember which thing it was in or what. I just know that like he won one of those. It was like a gold CFP straight jacket yeah. or something. Yeah. Straight jacket, yep. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, I had one of those. I don't know if I still have. I think I do. I think I still have it in the in the loft somewhere. Yeah. So, man, how crazy is all of that that you just knew? I mean, I've had situations where I was like rolling up to a trick that I've been trying for four hours and just knew that that was about to be the one yeah. that I was going to land it on. And then you like, you have that conversation in your head, like, well, what if you're wrong and it's not, and then land it, roll away. Like what just happened? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's amazing, man. That's the feeling that, that you're chasing for the rest of your life. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Oh yeah. Dude, I, I've been chasing it for my whole life. I'm 46, dude. Like, I'm, 
fucking dead. But it's like <laughs> not it's, by twenty twenty three standards. <laughs> no, but it's it's just crazy how much I miss it, man. I I miss it so much. I still have jumps in my backyard. I was gonna ask you about that yeah. if because I was uh, watching a podcast you did a few years ago today, and you were saying how they're still dialed and you keep them maintained and people still ride them and stuff. I was gonna ask, is it still like that? Um. Well, last year I jumped the section. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it was sketchy, dude. Like, it was nothing like I remember. Dude. <laughs> like, I was just, it was nothing. Cause it was so easy for me back then. Yeah. And I could do it blindfolded. I did it in the dark one night. I did it like with just the moonlight. Oh and my I did God. Yeah, dude. So gnarly. I did that. You know what I mean? And like that happened. And there's so many sessions that have gone down here. And like from Cam White years to the Cesar Flores years to the like ev- all the people that Slayer came here like for the last 10 years of it. And, and it was awesome, you know? The yard probably survived for about 15 years of just madness, mm-hmm. and awesomeness, and then and then it started slowing down. And there was only like four or five guys that would come, and then there was only like two or three guys, and then and then only one. The last man standing was Gary Laurent, and he like still to this day will come do a backflip or two on the resi just to just to do it. Wow, just to do it, you know, just because he feels good about it. And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome, man. So I just leave it up, but but um, like someday I'm gonna probably tear it down and make a pump track or something that I can like stay fit on and like not get hurt. But yeah. like when I when I jumped that section, I was so sketchy. I was like, dude, that was the stupidest thing I ever did in my life. <laughs> what, dude? Like, I, cause cause like I, I like I had a really gnarly brain injury in 2010. I don't know if you know this or not. Yeah, but that was like that ended my whole thing, you know? So then I had to ride with a full face and that was so hard to ride with the full face. Like I couldn't see like enough. And I rode full face my whole life. Like with, I rode in a full face for years cause I rode motocross mm-hmm. motorcycles all the time. So it wasn't really that big of a deal. But then when I went to a pro tech and then when I got back from the brain injury, I was trying to learn how to do things again with the, with the face mask. It was kind of hard. And I was like, dude, it's just not worth it, man. I don't know how to do what. And, and then, I, like, I started working a lot with a, a TV show. And it's like, when you have all that TV show and you have that many people depending on you, yeah, it's kind of selfish. It's kind of selfish for me to just be like, no, but I need to go around my backyard and just see if I can do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, dude, like, if I crash, they're out of work. They're, they're not feeding their families sometimes, you know? It's not cool. So... Like, I'm like, dude, just calm down for a minute, dude. Like, when you're done with TV, then you can go send it. Do whatever you need to do. But until then, like, you need to chill a little bit because you need six to eight weeks to recover from any injury. You know that. Right. Like, broken bones. Like, any broken bone. Like, and you don't want to go on TV with a broken arm cast like this. You know, I broke six wrists, bro, three and three, you know. Mm. I've met three of my four limbs. Like, there's unlimited problems that I had, brain injuries. And, like, I don't know how many concussions, over 50 knockouts, you know? So all those things accumulated, like, made me make the decision to just keep my bike. I kept it. Uh, everything's there. It's dialed, ready to go. Just flat tires. You know what I mean? Just so, mm-hmm. so I'll just instantly, oh, my God, I got to go hit a flip real quick, pump the tires up and send it. I just chopped the lip out and was like, that's it. I'm not doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, now the lip's still good on the resi, and everything's dialed for the resi. So if I want to do a flip on the resi, I can. But I'm just not doing it, dude. I'm just like, just stay calm, don't trip, and you'll be fine when you, like, when I turn 50 or something, when I'm done TV and done with the show and done with all this work and all this stuff, and maybe I retire from that, I just go back to BMX if I want, you know. And, yeah. and I'm not gonna forget how to ride. Like I know how to ride. It's like part it's of. It's like me. riding a bike. Dude, it's part of me. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Tyler. Tyler Truman was like, let's get him running again. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, I need you to come out, Tyler Truman, and build the roll the roller section, like so we can like make a like a, a pump track all the way around that whole thing, right? Make it sick, dude. 
Yeah, I mean, you don't have to have super, super gnarly jumps. You can have yeah. kind of medium ones and still be able to cruise. They're like that that section six, you know, in, in Pennsylvania, that mm -hmm. six. It's like, yeah, and yeah, and then through the trees and stuff. That's the best the best thing I've ever done on a bike, by the way, is in that section. There's three in that section. Oh, yeah. It's, there's through jumps. The, like, like when the trees were the goalposts on the landing, you have two trees right there like mm -hmm. that. And you like there's the long and low over the road so like when i landed on that one before the road i was like that's it dude i'm setting the world on fire later and that's three that's <laughs> I, I remember looking at the lip like going like this i was like all right looking good looking good came around and then, then there's that big ass tree right there and i was like yeah dude sick and then landed in i was like that was the best thing i ever did on my bike never do it again that was awesome <laughs> one and done one and done that's it well, I'm stoked to hear you still got your bike and stuff. What What's the bike set up? Yeah, it's a S and M dirt bike. Hell yeah! Uh, probably ten years old, maybe eleven. It, it's it's sick. It's like pretty badass bike. I'm glad to hear you still have it everything and shout oh, out dude. to uh, S and M. Yeah, yeah. Shout out. I love S and I love Chris, man. Yeah. <laughs> My guy. Yeah, they're definitely as real as it gets over there. That's it, man. Yeah, uh, is there, so is Gary's the only person, like, local to you that w would ever want to come out and ride those? Um, yeah, Slayer might give it a go, but I don't know. He's, like, Slayer's messing with, with Kicking Wings jumps now. And Kicking Wings real good, too, but he, uh, he's, like, his yard's running, too. He's rerunning, he's redoing his yard, so he still rides real good, you know? Like, they're all real good riders still. Like, Slayer kills it, dude. I watch him on, on Instagram and stuff sometimes. I watch him. I watch Kick and Wing. I watch um, all these local dudes that are they're riding with them. Yeah. And, dude, I'm so stoked for them. I'm so happy to see somebody keeping it going, you know? Oh, and hell yeah. If anybody wanted to ride my house like that, I'd be like, yeah, dude, come on over. You know what I mean? Like, let's do it. And I would help them work and build and whatever. But nobody's really messing with the jumps because they're like, Dude, it's so so sketchy. They're gnarly, they're like, dude. They're gnarly, and like, there's like a transfer, and like, you got to do this crazy shark wing thing, and like, shark fin into another little thing. And you got to pull up and back to make it into the another landing, and like, it's just it's like wild style, man. Like, wild, like, berm to berm gaps where you got to try and like change your bike over, pull off this wall, change the bike over to land on this wall. Oh, Jesus Nate Christ! Timer, like. Nate Berkheimer was like the baddest at that one, that S berm thing. It was double A pro, like so you're just like yeah, yeah, and, and zip zip. It was so dope. But, yeah. Yeah. On back there, man. It was like best thing I ever made. Hell yeah. Uh, I gotta take it back to that contest because Biz just went in the chat and said TJ beat us all by eight points. Must have went <laughs> big on the girlfriend clothes purchases. <laughs> I didn't go big. I just. Like I don't I don't know what happened. Well, you know what? In 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 my defense, like dudes crashed and messed up, so yeah. it wasn't like I just beat everybody by tricks. It was like I just didn't mess up. Yeah. As much. So like I was doing transfer transfers, and I also qualified first, so I, I was able to go last. Mm -hmm. See what everybody else was doing. So when somebody would crash, the pressure was off. Right. You know? Oh, okay. Oh, and now I can just do this one or the, that one, you know? Right. And then Mike was messed up first one. Yep, first that 720 one. bar or yeah, 720, like, whatever. Yeah, it's just 720. Like, there was no 720 bars back then. But that, no, dude, Ryan was so ahead of his time. Like, he is still capable of winning a contest to me. And, like, I see him and I'm like, dude, his – like double bar spin backward. Like when he chucks those, that thing's been getting done for 15 years now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you can't duplicate that kind of commitment. Like you're just yeah, like letting it go. And like, in a 360, it's gnarly. Like letting them go, let them fly. Yep. It's so scary. You're just sitting there letting them go, and you're just counting them. Please just keep going. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you, you, you throw the hands out and just make it look good and like Sean Butler, and then keep it moving, you know? But, like, doing it in a 
backflip is so sketch, dude. I can't even imagine doing a double double bar spin backflip like that. No. Nothing. Still. And yeah, he had that post. Was it last week or whatever for his birthday where he did the the three sixty straight triple and a backflip straight double. I, I think he did a straight triple. Either way, he did the backflip straight dubs in that video. It was like all in the same day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they were probably back to back, bro. Like he he is far beyond the best rider to ever touch a bike. Like he's so when, when it comes to tricks and stuff. Like there's there's natural talent, I think natural talent wise overall, like Ch- Jay Miron is probably the craziest all, all out everything, yeah. everything from flatland to dirt to I mean everything in the business. He, I'm embarrassed being in the Hall of Fame and him not being in the Hall of Fame to be honest. Like I he needs to be that he needs to be in there for sure, hundred percent. I'm voting for him every year till he gets in. Like he needs to be in there. Um, so Jay Miron is the best bike rider to ever touch a bike, really, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah. as far as like natural talent and stuff like that, no one can touch Taj Mahalovic. Like yeah. he's he's Taj is like just how he looks on a bike and being six foot ten or whatever he is, not like he's probably like six two or three, but he's a huge dude. He's a big like, dude, yeah. Could never look that good on a bike. Never. No one looks that good on a bike that's that tall. Bar Spinner Ryan uh, is is real, real good looking on a bike, and Matt Berenger. Those two dudes are are exce- very huge exceptions, and Gilly. But but those those three dudes. There's a there's a couple of tall dudes that look good on a bike, but not like Taj. Like Taj looks better than anyone I've ever seen in my life, and just he he has so much style and so much skill, and 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 just his. I don't know, man. His his aura about him, right? Everything about Special. him. Special. It's just badass. So. Yeah, he was at Rays this winter, and uh, just getting to watch him ride in there, he definitely he's still got that style. Yeah, dude, he's so he's like I just love the guy. Like he he's a great great dude too, man. Like good good human and and just what a what a he was my favorite rider growing up. Like him, um, you know who else I love is Todd Lyon. Yeah, like, because I was a racer. So when I see a dude in backflips in, in the races, double A pro, and didn't even care, like he crashes his ass off, dude, and just like just keeps going. Like <laughs> yeah. so funny. He's he's like great, man. He's yeah. wearing all this crazy, like army man shit, and just go out there and just cut sick. Yeah. What about uh? Mike Aiken was 17 in that contest. What did you guys think when you first saw him coming on the scene like that? Well, we, I mean, I've known Mikey since he was a little kid. Like, he was wearing massive knee pads with four piece bars at Fuzzy's backyard in Roy. Oh, so, okay. Fuzzy doesn't even live in Roy now, but this is back back then. So, when I would drive up there to Fuzzy, stay at Fuzzy's, we had bedrooms at each other's houses. So, I would have a bedroom at Fuzzy's house go out back, work on the jumps, make stupid, crazy jumps. Like, so like I would make a lift that was like a foot wide and six feet tall, straight up. Like crazy, <laughs> the craziest jumps you've ever seen. And then here comes this little 14 year old dude. Maybe he might've been 13, like cut sick doing no foot of one handers and, and just riding his bike, like just loving bikes, you know, just loving bicycles. And then, we throw him in the back of the truck and go eat Wendy's and stuff like that. So I knew Mikey since he was a, a, a kid, a legitimate child. Yeah. And then watched him just blow up, just completely kill it. And then I remember like the first time that we ever saw somebody with as much style as Mikey come out wasn't until Chase Hawk. Yeah. So when we saw Chase at, and I saw him at Red Bull Elevation in Whistler and I watched him whip it all around and I was like, dude, that is just crazy beautiful like and he's a little kid he's just a child just completely owning it and uh, i was like falcon that me and brian hung out a lot because we were like kind of older dudes and then we like always first run down the down the um the jumps we would go together yeah we all the way to the end first go every section so that was something that we both prided ourselves on like 
can we make it all the way down to the mm-hmm. end for the show? And maybe even 360, the last one, if we if we made it to the last set, like no problem. Just kind of like telling everybody that was easy, like type shit. It was so funny. Yeah. And that, so we would do that that kind of stuff. Just me and him would laugh our asses off. But but when Chase came out that day, I was like, dude, that kid is so badass. And and then he, he obviously he was. He yeah. Was. Still still. St- Still doing it. It's cool to hear that you like knew Mike before, when he was a kid and watched him go through the blow up that he did and just become the BMX world's favorite rider. Yeah, yeah. He he he's probably. I bet you if you said who has the best style in BMX, who's ever had the best style in BMX. So he's he's another guy that that. It's a Hall of Fame dude. You know what I mean? Like these are like dudes that that are Hall of Fame dudes for real. Yeah. Like, like, no doubt about it. Brian Foster, he's already been in there for a long time. Fuzzy, long time. But Nasty will be in there. Jay Miron needs to be in there. He should have been in there years ago, in my opinion. Um, it, uh, I, I, I know for a fact that Mikey Aiken should be in there. Taj Mahalich should be in there. Joe Rich. Um, these are all people that are like cemented their legacies in my mind you know what i mean like oh yeah and really really did a lot for the sport yeah of BMX and and in my mind you know so as much or me more than me so like as much or more than i did so it's it's something that's very important to me to try and get those dudes in because it like it just matters you know oh yeah i think maybe they need to add more people at chase each hawk year well. chase hawk too yes like, there's just so many badass dudes. Like maybe even we make a new section for it, you know, the style cap section or, or whatever, like, or, or maybe the people's champ section, you know, cause so it doesn't matter if you won a lot of contests. It's just, it really doesn't matter. Like, like your, the dudes that were winning the contest favorite rider. Mm-hmm. So you should be in there. You know what I mean? Like oh, there's yeah. no doubt about it. Like you should be in there. Like you're, Mikey Aiken should be in there. Like he's he's the people's champ, and like I love the kid. And like he's really a badass dude. And and Chris Doyle, somebody that like can still just mash a section. Oh yeah, and just own it. You know what I mean? And and like some all of us have had like crazy injuries and weird things happen to us, heart attacks and fucking brain injuries, and you know you know what I mean? Like all this mm-hmm. stuff. So like. I, I'm not mad at somebody if they just say, you know what, man, I just can't do it no more. Like, like Jay Miron, he's had a thousand knockouts, and and a, I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen him do some crazy trick on a vert ramp and then not wake up. You know, what right? I mean? like, in a in a coma. So yeah, you gotta respect that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think maybe some other people have said this too that maybe they need to just start adding more people each year so they can catch up and not, you know, 30 years from now be finally getting to the people who should be in like today. Yeah, I mean there there is there is that there is that for sure. Um I just don't know how well the the the, the one section is like there's a there's an old timer section right mm. well the old timer sections need to change into a different timer section like mm. maybe mid 2000s sections yeah. or you know what i'm saying like yep. where it's like maybe we just switch it up like that or or something cool i mean they're all real cool dude at the at the hall of fame like they they are like open to suggestions and open to to learning and 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 knowing you know what i mean they're all they're not the end all be all. They're not like, yeah, this is it, done. You know what I mean? They're like, like they they have ears. They, yeah. They like to listen and they they pay attention. So it's it's real cool. cool. Yeah, maybe just some way of like catching up so that moving yeah. forward, it's like, all right, we're putting in the people, the people who should have been in there, you know, before the Hall of Fame even existed, are there now, and now we can put in the people who deserve it as they deserve it. Right. Exactly. So, like, I agree with that. Like, that's that's pretty cool. But, like, you have to have been retired for five years, mm. first of all. So, like, 
I don't know when they were saying that I was retired, but like I was honored to get back get back in the nomination list and then get in there. Yeah, I, I didn't happen. I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, okay. And then, and then when it did happen, I was like, dude, that was really, really cool. Like, I don't know if you know this or not, but I flew like 33 hours to get back to do it. For 12 hours. Stay there, did the party, did the thing, did the speech. Flew back on the plane 33 hours back to Cape Town. Jeez. It was, dude, yeah, it was That's brutal. Rough. That is it, rough. Yeah, dude. But, but uh, you know, we put the whole show on hold. There, were, there was 250 people. Just waiting for me to get back. Type wow. shit. Crazy, dude. That just shows how important it was to you. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was that important to like, because it means a very big part of my life. You know? Mm-hmm. So, what was it like being on the deck for contests like those back in the day? Like, that's the part I missed the most. Yeah. Yeah, because every dude on that deck took a shower that morning. <laughs> they they knew when they were putting their pads on or they were putting their ankle braces on or they were putting on their gloves or whatever they were putting on like some dudes wore nothing some dudes wore little i wore a little i wore like a little bit of knee pads underneath underneath my pants and that's it and mm-hmm. then and then a protect helmet that's it like and it was like wild i mean and towards the end there i was doing flip whips on the first set like crazy things that were like so scary for me mm-hmm. <laughs> i was like dude so nervous and so scared and i knew that the shower was not going to feel the same when i got back and i still sent it and i was like dude like those you got to have respect for that like because every dude on the deck is feeling the same thing as you are yep. so we all loved each other because we knew that at any moment you're going down and you're crashing your ass off you know and then all of a sudden, you know, when it happened to Stephen Murray, who was one of our brothers, like me and Nasty loved the kid, like, still do. You know what I mean? I still, if I if I fly through England, I always go for two and a half hours to his house. Yeah. In between flights. Like, I make sure that I stop, say hi to him, and then go back, you know? Because it's just the world weird, dude, and you don't know, you know? So right. Just, I mean, I, when that happened to him, it, like, really really made us all like real tight like god dude this really is crazy like we're really doing some gnarly stuff here yeah and you know and it could change your life yeah so uh being on the deck with everybody was it friendly smack talk what was going on dude it was so fun like it was yeah there was always smack talk like always everybody would talk to it always and then like we, but it was all good. Very, very just. And everybody was pulling for each other. Yeah. For real. Like, it wasn't fake. Like, oh, I hope you get it. Not really. But you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but like, you really did want to see the dude do it. Because in my mind, I want to beat Nyquist on his best day. Yeah. I want to beat Nyquist on his worst. You know what I mean? So that's why all those runs in that contest, I did my best runs. And and beat the fucking brakes off some of some of the dudes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like like no, you you like you have to do your best runs and just kill it no matter what. Yeah. And so just to see if you if you would have won or not, you know what I mean? Like would you have won or would you have not? If Ryan would have put down his best stuff or if Nasty would have put his de- best stuff. Everybody needs to they need to know that you won that thing and not not just because Somebody had a bad day. Right. Is, you know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah, you won, but that, that's how it was. It was like that. Like, everybody wanted to, like, everybody to win. We, yeah. want, we want to see you do good. We want to see you do the best thing that you got. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was so fun. It was so fun. That no-hander lander on that step up. That was crazy. Was and only thing I've ever done that on. For real? Yeah, I never even did it in practice. I, I just, if, like, I don't know what happened, but I was like, dude. I'm going to no hammer land at this thing because, <laughs> because uh, like I jumped up this step up and it, there's, there's zero weight and it's zero th- and my seat is up my ass anyway. So I might as well just like catch it with the knees. Yeah. And I'll be sick. It'll be, it'll be dope. And then like a motocross trick, you know? Yeah. And I was like, that'll be sick. 
And so I did it and it worked and it, and it worked out. It was the highest score. You know what I mean? It was like, they were like, holy shit, this is sick. You know? Yeah. And that was probably the last time that anyone's done a no hander lander in a BMX contest. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't know. I've never seen it, but I would imagine I, I can't say it definitively, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone was like, yep, that's the last time someone did that. First and last first and last. I never seen anybody do it. And then I never seen anybody do it after. I mean, maybe on ramps, you know, like maybe on, on ramps or something, but never in dirt. Yeah. I know Nike, I know uh, Mira used to land one handed all the time. Like, this is so easy. And, you know, he's like, he would always make it one handed and just like do whatever, like far spin and then land one handed. Mm -hmm. Kind of telling you how easy life is for him. And you're like, dude, <laughs> holy shit. Just rubbing it in. Yeah, dude, just completely. And it was so fun to watch. Oh, I can't even imagine being there for that. It was so fun. I would I would always go on the deck when I would watch Best with and Mira and it would be like the Best with Mira rivalry. And then you have guys like John Parker and, and like some of the baddest dudes in the world. Mm -hmm. Of course. Jay Miron first did a five forty tail whip in in San Francisco. I think it was the first one he was doing. Yeah, I'm not sure. I saw him do that in San Francisco in ninety nine, ninety eight, ninety nine. I was like, that is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. And, and you know, that's Dr. Jamie on, dude. He's like legendary status to me. You know, I love the guy. And Eminem was on the deck. And I was like, me, Eminem, and whoever else was watching Jamie on do this wild. You mean like the rapper Eminem? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, he was wearing a yellow jumpsuit. Yellow tracksuit. Yellow Adidas tracksuit or something. <laughs> like some kind of track. Maybe Nike. I don't know. Straight out of the Without Me video. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wow. That's pretty legendary. Yeah. It was oh, fun. Man. It was like some of the heaviest hitters in the, in, the, in the entertainment industry would come to our contests. You know what I mean? It was like, like we'd, we'd look in the, in the stands and we'd see, um, like I saw Gwen Stefani. Like she... She handed me one of my prizes that I got for something wow. at a thing. She was there. And then me and me and Fuzzy were backstage with Jay-Z and Ja Rule and Emil. So, like, at a, at a MTV Sports and Music Festival. J5 was playing. Like, Jurassic 5 was playing their last show, their last public show. And we were riding BMX dirt jumps in front of their stage. Like, Whoa. by the... And then the crowd was on the, on this side, dirt jumps were on this side, Jurassic Park was on that side. Like, it was so sick. It was the craziest time to be alive. Dude. No kidding. Were they like, were they talking about how stoked they were on this stuff at all? Oh, dude, totally. All the time. I mean, like, you remember like, uh, uh, who's the guy like, uh, back that ass up. Yeah, it starts with a J. Ja Rule, Jada Kid, I don't know. Uh, Gary, Juvenile. Oh, Ju okay. So Juvenile was playing a show at the Hard Rock, and he's like, this is all those dirty motherfucker in my friend TJ Lava's house. And, like, I was like, what? I, I don't know you, but damn, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but thank you. And that was just because MTV was telling them to say that shit because they were doing the sports and music festival in my backyard. Oh. And then, and we had Ashton Kutcher and Tony Hawk and like some of the craziest names, Carson Daly. Everybody was there what and, the and like watching the whole thing. Yeah. And then all the SHL dudes were here too. And then like, you know, Matt Berenger was sending front flips on the, on the big dirt jumps in the back. And what a great time. It was so fun. Dude, how do we get back to where BMX is that integrated with that part of culture in people's lives? Um, I don't know. I think I, I think it's that we have to like put a little bit more of a spotlight on, on some of the stuff. And and they're 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 the tricks are just it's almost too robotic, you know what I mean? Like mm. it's too like pre planned. I, I'm not mad at it. It's amazing. Don't get me wrong, I'm not even tripping in the 
like I said, like they have more talent than their pinkies, dude. Yeah. These kids are like amazing. But but I think it's just the, the, the aspect of evil can evil and what's gonna happen. Oh they, yeah. They they know what's gonna happen with with these new new Olympic kids and like, you know, the, the amazing stuff that they're throwing down is almost set in stone. And yeah. it's all you're almost positive they're gonna pull it as well. Whereas we were like 50-50 chance, you know, <laughs> like 50-50 chance. You're either going to see something very incredible or you're going to see the gnarliest crash you ever saw in your life. And you're going to be like, dude, I'm glad I'm not him. That and makes that, total sense. Yeah. So that, 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 I really believe that that's what it is because my dad used to go to his work when he, he before he died, he was like, so like into BMX mm -hmm. and into dirt jumps and everything. And, and everybody would be like, how's your boy? How's your boy? How's your son doing? And he'd be like, he's great. But let me tell you, the reason he's great is because sometimes either he crashes his ass off or he wins. He does really good. You know, it's like, and that was something that we all said was first or last, mm. whatever, you know what I mean? First or last. And like, sometimes it was more last than first. And sometimes you just swallow rail and kept it moving. Yeah. I feel like some of this might be why people like watching our wheelie ride so much because he's doing such crazy stuff and he's also like not landing something sometimes yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's it is a pleasure to watch him ride sometimes you know what i mean yeah it is so i mean all the time it's fun as hell to watch him ride because you don't know you, you have, have no, no idea they too are the same way it's yeah too. he's a hit or miss man you're either gonna see something incredible or you're gonna see them the gnarliest crash ever morgan wade some yeah morgan wade has always been that way and like i mean when he took all that to big air it was a whole nother level like mm -hmm. how how he did some of that stuff is just so scary one-handed double tail whip <laughs> come on dude like like oh so scary and yeah part really on the his bike is so light and he's doing such amazing tricks over the biggest jumps I just, I, I, I'm dumbfounded. I can't believe it. Yeah. So, I mean, just talking to you about this stuff, I get the hint that you, like, you pay attention to BMX still. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah. Like, all these kids that are, I, I watch all their Instagrams and I comment on all of them that I see because I just know how much they try. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I what it takes, dude. I know they have what it takes below the belt to get it done. And like, I'm like, dude, I'm so proud to see them doing what they're doing. Yeah. That's awesome. So is there anybody, uh, younger that you're stoked on right now? Mm, that like, I can't believe of some of the stuff that they're doing. Um, I really love, I still love Kevin. I think Kevin, like, oh, yeah. I mean, I love his style, how he does Superman seat grabs and stuff. Like he's, He's probably my favorite new school rider because of that, how he just still does all the old school tricks, but he does them with such style and such like grace. Oh yeah. And you know, and I, I mean, I, I like, I, I like Chris. I like, I like all these, these new, newer kids as well, but like, man, it's, it's really hard to, to beat, you know, some of the older dudes that, that have been out there for a while, you know? And, and I mean, you, you can't like one of the, my favorite writers of all time. One of my favorite writers is Drew Bazanzan. Oh yeah. I mean, don't sleep on Drew. Like his, his skill level was way, way ahead of its time. I think, you know what I mean? Like oh, by far, dude, some of the stunt shows that he was doing, like some of his containers, stuff, the like, uncontainable video by itself, it, just like, you can't like, you can't even put a price on it. You're like, dude, that is so rad. Some of the so, most gnarly stuff that has ever happened on a bike yeah, was just yeah. in that one video. Just in that one video, dude. Like, one mess up and he's done. You know what I mean? It's so, you know, I'm shout out to Drew. I like, I really miss him too, like being yeah. out there. Um, you know, Scotty Kramer was one of the, baddest dudes to ever touch a bike for seriously sure. could do anything yep. scotty kramer was one of the i mean he's seriously like he invented like some of the craziest shit that's still going on that people are having a hard time landing today yeah 
and then he he did it. He was the dude, you know. The Anthony Napo when I saw when I saw Anthony Napo come out, um, the Paulton would be on the deck with us, and he would like when he came out, he was just killing us. You know, he knew he was winning. He was one of those guys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was like he knows he's winning, and and like you're all just battling for second or third, and be on the podium would be great. You know what I mean? That'd be sweet. Mm-hmm. Just have a little extra money for dinner that night. That's you know what I mean? Like we didn't. It was whatever. But we we knew where we stood because he was doing no handed front flips on the first set. And we're like, oh my god, you know. And then <laughs> yeah. when, and Corey Bowen came out. Like Corey Bowen was like the dude. You know what I mean? He was yep. completely killing it and knew that he was winning. And like we all knew he was winning. Everybody knew. You know, Stephen Murray, same thing. Like. Every time somebody new would come out, we all knew it, and we were like, "All right, cool, all right, <laughs> okay, you got it, you win." You know what I mean? Like changing so, up the guard. Yeah, dude. Exactly. Every every year or two, there would be kind of a changing of the guard, and you'd see it, and you'd have to just like be like, "Damn, dude!" And then once in a while, me or Nasty or Mike was Mike was more than anybody, but. But me or Nasty would sneak in there and, and win one, or you know we would like get somewhere top five or top three, or you mm-hmm. know we'd be in there. But I mean, we made the finals more often than not. But damn, dude, it was tough. Yeah, have you uh, have you seen Marcus Christopher yet? Dude, is <laughs> ridiculous. I watched him since he's a little kid too. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. We sponsored him. Right, so, Torque. Yep. Yeah. So like. I instantly sponsored that kid. As soon as they said, TJ, put a team together, I was like, all right, cool. Marcus Christopher, first first rider. Yeah. And, and, you know, he because he's so badass. I mean, he was like just completely owning his backyard ramps. Oh, yeah. for sure. Weird. He lives only 40 minutes from me. I mean, that kid is still amazing. I mean, oh, yeah. Is, he's yeah. one of those dudes that you know is going to land it, though. You know what I mean? Like, you yep. know. He just goes, like, no, it's, it's, it's not even a question. You're just watching the demo. It's just a matter of if he wants to pull it or not, or if he wants to, what tricks he wants to do. Cause he's, whatever he does, he's going to land it. Yeah. He's always been like that. You, you watch him ride just at like raise and he's just doing the craziest stuff ever. And it's like, it's just easy for him. Easy, easy. And, and like, that goes back to his parents too, you know. They're awesome, like, so parents, awesome. Like that, I mean, you have nothing. It's it, he still has to go out there and do it, but when you have support like that, you get the level. You yeah. get a Marcus Christopher, you know. And so, shout out to Marcus Christopher's parents as well. Like, they're badass, you know. His dad, like, his dad's so sick, dude. You gotta be like, you gotta be kidding me, man. They put it. They put everything into that kid, and he just. Is bad as hell. Yeah, his Seriously. dad's also jacked. How about some other guys that you like? What's that? Who's who's some other guys that you like? Oh, dude, that's it's tough. There's everyone. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'm gonna shout out my buddy Lewis Kaminsky, who just got second at this local contest that was that happened a few weeks ago. There was a setup that wasn't a setup it was a ramp that they had like torn apart and was just sitting beside this bowl and nobody was even thinking about touching this thing and during his runs he figures out he can drop into this ramp that's not meant to be dropped into and then goes up this roll in for a foam pit and drops in off this roll in into another court it's just he's using the this course in this crazy way and like he didn't even know the contest was going on until I texted him that morning and he drove four hours down from Buffalo, New York to Youngstown, Ohio, just to ride bad. this contest. Got second in it only because one of my other buddies, Jamie Thayer, is just the most consistent. That kid, he's sick, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but Lewis is just, he did this seat bounce to 360 on the box jump. Yes. That was it was so insane because he he's sitting down as he takes off, stands up, and then starts the three. He doesn't three off the lip. He jumps, then threes. It was just insane. Man, if you have a clip of that, man, send it to me. I, will. I, I, I did seat bounces in my backyard 
for years. We had a, 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 a jump, like, so you, you come down, you hit the roll-in, do the three jumps, and then the third set, you jump, and then the berm, you'd sit down in the berm. Mm. And I would take my feet off and jump the, the long and low with my feet off. Yeah. So then, then put my feet back on and then go, because it was that easy. Yeah. I mean, it was that easy. You're just shitting all over the course. You're like, whatever, dude. <laughs> this is so easy. I'm out. I, I'll never not be able to do this. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you think. Yeah. Like, I will never not be able to do this. Everything is easy. It's no problem. And, and that's just how it is. And it was so fun, man. Like, mm. those those seat bounces. When you said that, I was like, oh, my God, I got to see that. Yeah, I'll send you the clip of it. It's so badass. And like, it's just out of nowhere. But then he does it in his run. You're just like, oh, Jesus. I lost my mind. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious to, to talk about, like, just what it was like to be a professional rider in, back in those days where things were so much different than they are today. Um, I think, like, well, everybody was – the camaraderie was, was heavy. Like, we all loved each other for real. Like, we still do. Yeah. You know, like, we called Doyle or – or whoever can call me. I mean, I still call Davis Auto every day, every year on our birthdays. Mm. It was birthday, exact same day we were born. Nice. And December 7th, 1976. And we, we call each other. I'm like, how's it going, Dave? He's like, how's it going, Jeez? Happy birthday. <laughs> <I'm> like, Happy. <laughs> That's every, awesome. Every year, yeah. So it's funny. But, um, like, who's another guy should be in the Hall of Fame as well, Davis Auto? He's yes. been insane, dude. Tail whip. To Tail whip to so nose first, pick. First one back in the day, you know what I mean? And then Morgan Wade did that too. Like, he's so sick too. He should be in there. But anyway, so um, all these dudes anyway. But being a pro back then was awesome. And, you know, I think the, the thing, like I said before, is they, they, they treated us more like, like, like we were gladiators because there wasn't no foam pit or no no resi or nothing none of that stuff when i was coming up like mm-hmm. before i i never i never been to woodward before 99 2000 you know 99 2000 yeah. i never went to woodward once like everything was just just after that yeah you know so everything that i learned and all the contests that i won were from dirt jumps learning on dirt jumps like learning in the backyard or dirt jumps like at the local trails mm-hmm. and we'd have to learn them and crash our asses off. So it was no, but that's also why the level of riding is, is where it is now today. You know right. I mean? it, it's like six to one, half a dozen of another, like every dude, every dude back then would have been doing what they're doing now with the foam and, and the resi and, and, you know, with the technology essentially, like, the lighter bikes, the this that, it would have been it would have been the same because the mentality's there. Mm-hmm. All the same cloth, you know what I mean. Everybody's the same type of dude, you know what I mean. That we're all like bike riders, right? Know? So, like, what was expected from you as a pro back then? Uh, well, you had to wear the right stickers. Yeah, I heard you calling out the stickers and stuff. Like, you had to run those for sure. Yeah, that sticker that you're talking about is Dragon Sunglasses. Yeah. And they, they were like, TJ, why don't you wear sunglasses? And I was like, because I just don't wear sunglasses when I ride. Like, I won't do that. And they were like, all right. So Nike has got a real pretty penny from them to do that. Like, I was like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like, if, if they paid me, like, Nike was getting paid, maybe. But, like, I'm not doing that just for the hell of it. Like, no way. I got like, first of all, I can't do it. It's weird to me. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like it, like it made the depth perception off. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. You can't play golf in, in, in sunglasses. Like that's to be able to see. Right. Yeah. What but else? That was, that was big. Like the sponsors were, were, they mattered. One time I went to McDonald's. I was sponsored by Mountain Dew. Came back to the autograph session with a McDonald's cup, and I got in really big trouble. Oh, cause because they don't have Pepsi stuff. No, they're Coke. Yeah. So, and I didn't know the difference. I didn't even have a clue. I was just like, yeah, yeah, duh, duh, you know, like nothing. Oh, like, God. Hey, Josh, what are you doing? And I creaked it, and then I was just like, all right, whatever. So that was yeah. like, I mean, it, it was a, it was an interesting time, you know, like 
I don't know. It was, it was weird, man. But it was it was also very cool because like the guy that started the X Games, Ron Simeo, would come to me and Corey's contest every time, no nice. matter what. He was like, DJ, what's up? I'm here. And then Nasty, hey, Nyquist, how you doing? You know, he like loved us. Like he would always be like yelling for the for us every time we go down the roll in and and like kill it, man. You know, like that's he, awesome. He, so fun. And he was like the guy that started the X Games, you know. So it was like it's crazy. And then I, like Gabby Reese, you know, she was a famous volleyball player, model. Do you know her? Name sounds familiar, but he was the host of Gravity Games when I won. Oh, okay. She was like one of the hosts, the TV host. So like, and, and that, that was network television. Dude, that was a big deal, you know. Right. And, and like, she was one of the hosts and then we became friends and then she plugged us in like i would be in a room with her and she would meet, introduce me to michael jordan and tiger woods Jeez. And, dude the heaviest hitters you ever imagine you like like i'm just a bmx dirt dude like, yeah it's like this is so stupid and then that, that, that was like real shit yeah that's insane so but like before you went pro and stuff, did you like consciously want and try to be a professional BMX rider? No, no, not at all. Like it wasn't even in the cards. There was no such thing as those. Like, like, like the pros were like really fast, and then they were doing tricks sometimes, like fuzzy. Oh, and, okay. Like fuzzy and Todd Lyons were the people mm -hmm. that tricks. Joey Garcia, Jimmy Garcia his brother and they were really fast and they were doing good i was fast too like randy stumphauser i beat randy stumphauser in the race one time here at nell's bmx some point in my life and, <laughs> and that, that i'm i'm still holding on to that because he's a hall of famer and he's badass randy stumphauser is one of the fastest riders ever and and would smoke me every day everywhere but maybe he got a bad gate or something and i won and i beat him and it was like I was like, dude, maybe I can race. But then the next race, I just got smoked, you know what I mean, by these guys because they were so fast. They were so focused and so fast, and I was not. I was just like, whatever, like, cool. Mm -hmm. Not just 360 in the pro section or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Try and Todd lines it up. And and so, like, I, I, I don't, like, being pro, like, back then was, like, kind of weird, too, because all of our team managers were ex-racers. Mm-hmm. Travis Chiprez as my team manager, who is one of the most famous BMX racers of all time. And then I had Tracer Finn as my team manager, who's one of the most famous BMX racers of all time. Like, both Hall of Fame dudes. And they were my team managers. They would haul around my second bike and all this weird stuff. Like, I would have two bikes at the contest because if one broke, then I would just have all the parts for somebody. Yeah. Somebody needed it. Or if I needed another bike. I just had another bike that was set up exactly like mine. Yeah. And then, you know, no problem. So that's how important it was. It was so weird. Before, it was a thing to do. You know what I mean? So it was, mm -hmm. it was crazy because, like, we were setting up to win, you know, before we even left. And, like, Tracer would clean all the bike, make it all dialed and, and looking good. Tra Travis was the same way. And in 97X Games, I crashed so hard in the practice. Like, the whole day, I'm slammed. I'm all muddy. Travis went all the way back to my car, got a whole change of clothes, including gloves, everything. And, and he goes, change. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, change. I go, dude, no, I'm all right. I'm already, I'm already dirty. Like, who cares? He goes, he goes, no, dude. If you look good, you feel good. You feel uh -huh. good, you feel good. You ride good, you live good. And I was like, okay. So I changed. And I and I and he was right, dude. Like, I put the gloves on. I was like, all right, everything's clean now. I can't crash. Yeah. That was it, dude. And you know what I mean? So, like, it was full face helmet, full custom paint job type thing. It was so, so fun. It was so cool back in the day. You know, it was fun. Yeah. So did you, like, recognize what you were living through while it was going no, on? No. Not even. Not even close. Like, I look back at it, I'm like, holy shit. That was awesome. I mean, the rental car stories and, the, you know, those things. I mean, we cut sick, dude. We had fun. We went crazy. It was before a lot of the things that, that like, it's probably, like, no-nos today. You know, oh, like, yeah. Do it now, I'm sure. I'm sure, like, 
they get driven to the contest or something, you know, to where we would like duct tape big fins on our rental cars, <laughs> like with cardboard fins and like crazy funny shit, and then show up and like rev the thing out, do massive burnouts in Florida, <laughs> stuff like that, like just funny, funny stuff that we would do and thrash just every rent a car that we had jumped far and wide like everything was always going i mean sometimes the airbags came out like there's been some rental cars in my life that i've been in that rental that the airbags came out like i know what that feels like it's funny and it's like <laughs> it's like dude like it's just a different level you know what i mean i'm sure that that doesn't happen today oh definitely not no like like dude we went nuts dude it was uh, and i remember like thinking like man i really wish we would have lived in the 70s like with tracer finn days and travis chipper's days they probably went crazy on their cars too but then like not quite like we did i don't think i think the 90s 90s bmx dudes and in the early 2000s like from 95 to 2005 that 10 year sprint was like the craziest BMX has ever seen, I think. I don't know, but I, I feel like because then after that, it got a little bit more corporate, a little bit more toned down. Mm. Like, be the, everybody be a little bit more kind. I mean, it was, you know what, you know what, it's like being a pro BMX rider back then was probably like, what's that contest is in Florida every year? Swamp Fest? Yep. It's probably like being in Swamp Fest. Every oh year, my. Every, like your drag, life is swamp fest, dude. Your life, you're living life like that. Oh like, my god! Yeah, I can't like, so and, and especially in Vegas. So the Vegas, the Vegas scene was so sick because we had a crew called the Pack Crew, and those punk ass children, and they had <laughs> tattoos on their arm right here. It said P A C. Still have them, I'm sure. So these dudes were like the baddest dudes in Vegas, right? And then there's me that lived in the desert, like way far away but i would ride all the way to north las vegas to hang out with these dudes north and east like vegas and and, and then when i was 16 i finally could drive there and then ride with them every day and and i mean it was so crazy the things that would go down that even one time they had a pack house and in the pack house there was this barrel this wine barrel mm. and one day we we're watching the news they were like yeah dead body found in a, a house and all of a sudden, it was BMXers' house. All of a sudden, it was the pack house. We partied in that house every day. Oh, like, my God. We would have crazy slam dance parties and, and punk rock bands playing in the living room. All this shit going down. And there was a dead body in the goddamn wine barrel the whole time. Oh, like, my didn't God. know it. So, like, that that kind of stuff happened. And it was it was just badass. Like, it was just so badass. <laughs> I mean, the, the rental car thrashing... That Fuzzy and I did like we did a 90 mile an hour e brake on nine on the 91, mm, like nice. 91 passing people because it was a front wheel drive. So I had the e brake going and it was going, I'm passing cars and I'm like, You're in there, like <laughs> <laughs> Fuzzy's laughing, and I'm laughing, and we're just one little thing of the wheel and the, and the car's going, We're done, yeah, we're done, dude. but we're going that fast and we're doing that, that thing, and like none of us cared. And then all of a sudden, we let the e-brake off, and the tires were flat. Like, <laughs> so that happened like every time we had a rental car, every single time. Like, God. I don't know. I had, I had to tell a Hall of Fame story like about rental cars. Like, it's funny. I don't know if you ever seen it, but if you didn't, go check it out. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. That yeah, is... dude. <laughs> Somebody said, "Hope you didn't drink the wine." <laughs> No, there was. Uh, they didn't pull any wine out of it. It just was in there. Huh. <sighs> so, being a pro and going through BMX and everything, and just doing the stuff that you've done outside of BMX, do you have any like specific examples of a time where your experience with BMX helped you outside of BMX? Um, my life now, you know. I host a show, like, yeah. And, and the reason I host this show is in '99 I had the backyard barbecue here, mm -hmm. BMX. Well, a guy was sleeping on my back porch. His name was Vinny Potestivo. Yeah. I went out back 
just being normal. And I was like, hey, man, you want a cheese quesadilla? Because I would make quesadillas every morning for everybody. And, and, and he was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, all right, cool, come on in. And he's like, I got to sweep this. I go, no, 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 I'll help you. And he's like, all right. So he came in, had a quesadilla. We hung out, chilled. And then we swept back porch, made it all nice. Everything got up, done. He goes, thanks, man. I was like, yeah, cool, no worries. And then we became friends. And then he called me every year on my birthday. And I was like, dude, this is a cool guy. You know? And then all of a sudden, years pass. And I'm in New York City signing with William Morris Agency. And, and William Morris Agency, like, they wanted to sign me for music. Mm. Even crazier. So, like, I'm in there. Like, we're, we're playing around with music and stuff and BMX. And they were like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And then Vinny calls me out of nowhere and says, hey, what are you up to? And I go, I'm, I'm signing with William Morris Agency right now. He goes, that's perfect. I go, why? He goes, because we work with them. I go, all right, cool. He goes, why don't you come up to my office? And I was like, you have an office? He's like, yeah. And I was like, so the last time I saw him was 99 when he was sweeping my porch. This is in 2005. So now I'm like, okay, cool. So I go up to his office. I walk in. And there's rainbows everywhere and all this rainbow stuff. And I'm like, Vinny, are you gay? And he goes, yeah. And I go, oh, thank God. And he started laughing. And I was like, why? He goes, why? I go, because you're so good looking. There'd be no chicks for the rest of us. Like, look at you, <laughs> you beautiful bastard. And he started laughing his ass off. And he's like, oh, my God. Do you want to show? Just like that. And I was like, yeah, sure. What show? He goes, it's called The Challenge. And I go, uh, no, that's Dave Miro's show. He goes, no, Dave's done with it. I'm pretty sure they're going to go a new direction. Dave's over it. You, you should call him. And I go, all right, cool. I called him right there on the spot in Vinny's office. Yeah. I was like, hey, Dave. And he's like, what's up, Teach? How you doing, buddy? And I was like, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm just chilling. He's like, I go, hey, I'm, I'm in Vinny Potestivo's office at MTV. And they asked me to host the challenge. But they said that you were done with it. Is this true, or is it, are you still in it? He goes, no, no, no. Host it for sure, dude. He goes, you'll, you'll do it for like one or two seasons, and then you'll get over it. He goes, but you should do it, dude, for sure. And I was like, all right, cool. All right, thanks, man. Yeah, all right, later, quick. Boom. And I go, all right, Benny, I'll do it. And then he goes, all right, perfect. You're the perfect guy. I said, all right, cool. And then walk over to the president of MTV and the lady that was in charge of the whole kit. And her name was Jackie French at the time. And she said, all right, good. I'm glad we got our guy. Hmm. Straight up. And then, you know, we went, long story longer, it was between me, Nasty, and um, one other snowboarder kid who was really, like, badass dude. And uh, I couldn't remember who it is right now, but he's awesome. But um, anyway, he, us three were kind of up, up for it. And then... They asked us, like, who would you pick? And I was still kind of winning. And I was like, dude, I'm still, like, in the mix. But Nasty wasn't winning at the time. Nasty was, like, having a hard go. And I was like, yeah, I would take Nasty. And they were like, what do you mean? I was like, Nasty's the guy. He has more charisma in his pinky than any 10 people I ever met. Yeah. I love him. You will love him. He's definitely not going to show up on time. But you <laughs> will love him. For real. He's the baddest dude. And they were like, okay. So they wanted to go with Nasty. The production company wanted to go with Nasty. And then MTV said, no, you're taking TJ. And that was because of that day on the BMX backyard barbecue. And I had Vinny come in, come in, have a quesadilla. And we got to know each other and we were cool. And then that day I walked into his office and I was like, are you gay? And I just to break the, break the, the surface and make him feel comfortable. You know what I mean? I wanted mm -hmm. him to like, but I don't care about that shit. And, and and he loved that. And so, like, we instantly became friends. And then that was it, dude. I got the job. And, and then I never looked back. I've been in the host of Challenge for 18 years. Jeez. Dude, I've been a host of a Challenge longer than I was a ho pro BMX rider. That's wild. I was a pro BMX rider for exactly 15 years. Dang. 15 years pro BMX. 18 years Challenge host. That's an adult. <laughs> Dude. Wow. So, like, I'm curious with that show, like, how long does it take to film the whole season of it? How long of a period does it happen over? Like, we have shows on Paramount Plus. Yeah. Called, called All Stars. 
and the World Championships. Okay, those ones take about six to seven weeks. Okay. So, yeah. But then there's the um, the CBS show. That one takes about eight weeks. And then there's it's fourteen episodes, twelve to fourteen episodes. And then the MTV show takes two and a half months because it's twenty episodes. So it's it's like however many episodes it is, it, it's two days to film an episode, mm-hmm. and then, and then so you got to you only film four days a week, so you're looking at like however the half adds up. Yeah. So is that happening at the same time ever, or is that like two months here, two months here, two months here? It's like there, there, there. Never, okay. Never the same. Never in the same city. Never the same time. Never the same city. Well. It is the same city now. We're doing hubs. So, like, I just got back from six months in, in Cape Town. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I loved it. But, like, I did a lot of Cape Town filming. So, I did a, a, some, a couple of different shows there. And then I did, before that was Argentina. I was doing a couple of different shows there. So, it works like that. Hmm. And you obviously enjoy doing it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's great time dude like me and the crew are real tight everybody's real cool and then i get to be immersed in whatever country we go to yeah fabric you know and like and get to meet everybody and like i got people in six of seven continents now you know everywhere wow yeah it's pretty cool man the only one that i haven't visited and that i don't know somebody in is antarctica but everywhere else and throughout the whole entire world i have people everywhere from south Central America to North America to Asia, everywhere in Asia, um, Middle East. I have a lot of people in the Middle East and then all over Europe. That's amazing. And, and all over Africa as well. Maybe so, maybe they'll do the challenge Antarctica. <laughs> that would be brutal. <laughs> yeah, that one's only two weeks. <laughs> yeah, we're only going to do that one for 10 days. <laughs> Are you ever like genuinely impressed or surprised when stuff's going on or like when they're doing those challenges things are you right there watching everything happen and yeah i watch it all live so yes i'm very impressed because the thing about bmx and our stuff and, and pro bmx riders and stuff is like we practiced and we also had time to practice the jumps and yeah fix and tweak the lips and like do whatever we had to do if it didn't feel right whereas these guys go to a place they see something that they've never seen before in their lives, has nothing to do with anything they've ever done, and they have to get it first go, first try, no practice, no do-overs. So Damn. it's very impressive. Like the the stuff that they get done, you know, the Johnny Bananas and the CTs and the, those guys, like those household names that are like really good at the at the show, are really good. Like they're really good athletes. Like the yeah. dudes, are badasses. Like they got to do picks. They got to do like crazy puzzles under pressure, and math, and eat something gnarly, and then run, and you know, be fit, and then you know, all of us like dirtbag BMX dudes. Like we're just like we ain't doing that shit. Like we're not doing. <laughs> like we're not gonna, like we'll eat something for a joke or if we want to make a bet, but we're not gonna do it like eat something and then run six miles and then do a crazy puzzle and then do a math and then do with this. Like, no, we're not doing that. Like, not like that. Those people, man, they are like, they're different. Build different. Yeah, man. Huh. It's pretty and cool to hear that. Proof of it. Like people like look at them and like, Oh dude, I could do that. Or I could do this. Or I can, you know, and they're like, that guy sucks or whatever, whatever. But like, dude, the reality is, the no do overs, no practice thing is real hard, dude. Like, oh, we yeah. Do 360s first run, and never touched the jump before. Like, we would do that all the time. But that's because we were pro bike riders. Like, we did bike riding. That's what we did. Right. So, we we felt a 360 before in our lives. They have to do all of that, but never touch the bike. Right. And so, they, like, it'd be like that. Like, a baby lamb getting on a rolling and trying to learn how to like drop in on the rolling before they even knew how to drop down a curve you know what i mean the disaster that would take place that is what is happening on the challenge with a little bit of safety you know they should do a bmx version 
Like a, just a challenge. It's a BMX trick. <laughs> oh, dude. Like that would be a challenge. Like have them try to do a BMX trick. Just a fly out three. <laughs> yeah. That was sick. Like, all right, who could do a 360 push go? Probably. I mean, it'd suck if none of them could, but maybe there'd be somebody. I mean, maybe, but I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Like, First go, I mean, no way. There's no way. Like, BMX is so hard. Like You'd have to have ridden before. Yeah, if you rode before, maybe. But, but like, it, it'd be fun to demonstrate it for them. So, like, I would get up there and do it. Yeah. Like, it'd be so fun to do that. Like, I rode a little a old school BMX bike on the last season I did. Oh, that's was, sick. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I was going to ask you, too, if there's ever been anybody on that show who recognized you because they rode and they recognized you from BMX and not just the fact that you've been this host for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot lot of them do. A lot of, like, the dudes. That's cool. Like, in the older older generation, like, the the all-stars and stuff, they all do. Like, they're, they're, like, big fans. Some of them um, were actually at the contest that I crashed at. Whoa. Yeah, it was crazy. So, That's like, like a heavy yeah. moment. Yeah, heavy. And they were there. It was weird. Like, Leroy was one of them. Um, I think it was Leroy and maybe Brandon Nelson. He was there, too. Huh. That's... That's pretty nuts to be like, oh god, I watched this really crazy, terrible moment happen, and now I'm standing in front of you, and you're, you're good, everything's okay. Yeah. Whoa. Um... On the, I mean, you've been talking about all these people you've met and stuff, and I talked to my buddy Sponge today, and he said, just a personal thing, you got to ask him, being that he worked for MTV and did all stuff, did he ever meet Pauly Shore? I've never met him. I, I, I think we've corresponded a little bit on on uh, Instagram, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and he seemed like a nice guy. Like I, I never met him, but I. I'd love to meet the guy because I was a fan of him back in the day. You know, yeah, I was a fan. I, I was a fan of Chris, of Carson Daly as well, and I met him and he was cool, and and he was on his phone texting and I was like, I bet you was texting Jennifer Love Hewitt right now. <laughs> <laughs> when, it, when when he was over here, it, it was during the time that he was going out with her, and I was like so jealous. <laughs> <I'm> like, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Hell yeah. Um that's so nuts I mean other crazy stuff that you've done too is like you had a literal video game with your name on it so like oh, no. how does something like that even happen or come up dude I have no idea uh, like they just asked me man they were like I, I mean it might have been Steve Astafin he, he was involved maybe I don't know um, I can't remember but I, I all I know is that Mira and and Hoffman probably made a lot more money than I did, <laughs> so top of it because I know Tony Hawk did. I made a hundred thousand dollars. That's it. Nothing else. Not not one penny more. It was a hundred thousand, <laughs> and I was like, but at the time I was like, dude, that is so much money. Like I can't even believe it. Oh so, yeah. I was fine. You know what I mean? It is a lot of money. I was like, dude, that's done. For a video game, it's not a lot of money. <laughs> like. It's not a lot of money at all if you're just a video, making a video game mm-hmm. of the person. His name's on the goddamn video game. And then all my friends on the video game made five or ten grand. Like, it's not enough. You know what I mean? Like, like each of my friends should have made ten grand or a hundred grand, rather. And then I should have made a million bucks if you're going to put a name on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's what it should have been, but it wasn't even close. I made a huh. hundred grand and they made ten grand, I think, or fifteen maybe. I don't know. But it was it was crazy having that but i never was a video game dude you yeah know I mean? I never, still am not like i i have i don't even know what playstation i have uh it was it was the newest one five years ago and okay. i never even and and there's still video games that not even open like <laughs> on it like i'm like dude i'm just gonna leave it there and then maybe someday it'll be worth something and somebody will come over and i'll just give it to them like let them play it that's it's, funny it's like it, i have no idea i have no interest that doesn't I have no, no idea. So they literally just, somebody came to you and asked if you wanted a game? Yeah, back then it was crazy. I mean, I was going, like I was riding for four. They gave me a truck. I was Whoa. riding for six. 
and they gave me 50 grand a year. I was writing for Fox, um, close, you know what I mean? And it was like, I don't remember what the paycheck was, but it was good. And Mountain Dew and Specialized. And, and then after Specialized, it was Schwinn and Monster. And I was the first Monster writer, like, Damn. you know, back in the day. And like, and how that came was Scott Sotovic was like on the deck of the X Games in 2004. And or three or four, and he's like walking across the deck with monster stickers, and he's like, "Here, you want to put this on your helmet? I'll give you five grand." And I was all, "No, I don't want to put that on my helmet." He's like, "He's like, dude, I go, why don't we just do a deal? We can do a deal for the year." And he's like, "All right, hold on." And he called Rob. Uh, he calls a dude named Rodney Sachs on the phone, and and he goes, "Here you go." And he gave me the phone, and I was like, "Hey," and he goes, "This is Rodney." I was like, "Hey, what's up, man?" He's South African fellow. And I was like, all right, cool dude. And uh, he goes, um, so you want a deal? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, okay. And we were, we came to terms. I think it was like 50 grand or something for the year. Yeah. And I said, yeah, that's cool. I'm down with that. He's like, all right, cool. Well, how do I know you're not going to fuck me? I was like, how do you know? How do I know you're not going to fuck me? He goes, I guess we got a deal then, don't we? <laughs> go, yes, we do. Boom, boom. Put the sticker on my helmet, got third place. You know what I mean? It was awesome. And then I was wearing a monster and all that shit. It was great. It was so fun. And I was like, dude, that was sick. And then got got the contract, and I wrote for Monster for a long time. It was so fun. Yeah. Well, uh, like, how involved with the video game stuff were you with the making of it and everything? Um, they came to my house, and they did cameras. So there's, like, motion capture with the cameras. Yeah. I didn't have to wear that suit with the bubbles or anything like mm-hmm. that like, I still wore all my same shit shorts and knee pads that's it and then I did every trick I know how to do on my first set so it was like very scary what a day like no doubt day. like every trick I knew how to do double trucks three whips flips back with no handers all that stuff everything I knew how to do on the first set which was peaked out dude like super gnarly crazy hard pack like it was the scariest day of my life like i was like dude this is going to be the worst day ever and i and i made it all so i, I did it all earned and then that were, money yeah they were like can you do that again i was like no nah, <laughs> let's just call that good oh my god so like were you stoked on the game when it was done i i didn't really play it i had no idea i was wow. stoked. Yes, yes because everybody was like you got a video game and 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 then they came out on on a, a game boy and i i didn't have one of those either i didn't even i didn't even know or care anything about it like yeah i knew i was i was more stoked that i got some of my friends bands and soundtrack nice like i was stoked on that you know what yeah. I mean? so seven was on there and and the Cottonmouth kings were on there and like they were all my friends so i was like stoked you know to have the my friends bands in the in the video game as well. And then I got them a little money too. Yeah, so that's cool. awesome. And then I had all my friends and got them some money, like Behringer and people like that, I guess. So it was, it was pretty cool. That is I cool. On, on my my game, but whoever wasn't on the other video games, I, I had them on mine. <laughs> you know, I got a bunch of my friends, like whoever. Hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's awesome when you can help your friends out. Yeah, it's so cool. It's so, like, it's the best feeling when you're able to do something like that, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't fully know, but I'm trying to get there. No, you do it, man. You do it right now, like, with your show. Like, it's it's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's cool to have somebody like yourself do the, do the show and, and say all the, the cool stuff that you said and all the things that you say about us. And that was awesome. You know what I mean? It was so cool that I was like, dude, I'll do this dude's show in a second. And then, you know, how we are. Yeah, dude, that was insane. Because I was I was riding when the when the video went up. And then not even two hours after it went up, I saw you commented on it. And I was like, whoa, that's kind of crazy. He actually saw it. And then you messaged me, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, dude, that's great, man. That's cool. Hell yeah. Um, so earlier today, I was just just Google searching to find some info to type in like the bio of 
the description for doing this with you and stuff and uh an interview or something from mtv came up and it was you young you and they're asking like what's your plans for the future or whatever and you said i'm just gonna retire live in a fat house and drive some caddies <laughs> so i want to know you got the caddy <laughs> of course <laughs> you're doing it my house is not that bad. It's just whatever. It's it's the same house I lived in since I was 22, bro. Like I I've never moved. I've never moved. I'm still the same dude. I still have the jumps in the backyard. I drive a pickup truck as main car, and then I have a bunch of badass old schools. That's it. You know, everything is just like, it's just I'm still the same dude, man. I eat Mexican food all the time and just pizza and get fat and try not to. You know? <laughs> That's funny. Later yeah. in that. You said, I just chill the rest of my life. Yeah, well, I mean, I would like to do that. But unfortunately, I'm working and, and uh, I just, I, I, I do, I, I am pretty chill. Like, I'm, I'm pretty all right. But, but when I go to work, I work. You know, sometimes we have very long days. Yeah. And a job, no doubt about it. But at the same time, it's a job with your friends, your best friends. You know what I mean? It's, it's it's you're working with your best friends yeah. and it's you have to just remember absolutely no matter what you're doing i mean that's the ideal thing but no matter what you're doing dude yeah that's funny so, so you're doing it yeah you're doing it you're, you're pretty close pretty close that's so funny i i saw that i was like dude i have to ask him if he made it happen <laughs> driving the caddies I manifested it pretty good like it's not it's not exact, I mean, but it, it's it's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Hell, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, like, what's what's normal life look like for you when you're home and not working? Uh, every morning I take the dogs out and I throw the ball for them every morning. And then I either bring them in the house or I put them in the blazer and I go to Starbucks every day. And the Starbucks story is Dave Mira stayed in my house. And he got me turned on to Starbucks. And then I just, and when he killed himself, I was like, dude, I'm going to Starbucks. So I went to Starbucks and just kind of felt like, because I, I, I sat at the same table that he and I sat at. And I remember, like, cause we sat there for four hours, dude. And he was, like, talking to me and, like, dude, we really did it, didn't we, TJ? Like, it was awesome, wasn't it? And I was like, it was the best time in the world. Like, we're talking about BMX. Like, it was the best time. We had so much fun. He was another guy that crashed in their cars, like, like nobody's business. And, and we would just die laughing. Like, I mean, crash that derby with the rental cars, like the craziest shit that you could ever imagine. We did it. And, and he and I did a lot of that together. And, and so we would like, we were talking about it and everything. And then like when he died, I was like, man, that sucks so bad. Like I felt so sick about it. I just wanted to be like kind of close to him, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went there and like, I just felt like we were, felt like he was there. Like, like we were still talking about it, you know what I mean? Cause he was sitting right here where I'm sitting at the time, you know what I mean? Like, damn, dude. And so it kind of made me feel good about him and it made me think about him all the time because he, he was a big part of my life and then, and a big hero of mine. So, like, I, I just always went there. And then I, I never stopped going. So every day I go to Starbucks, wherever country I'm at, if, if they don't have it, then I just go catch a coffee wherever every day i never drank coffee before that and this happened the september before he died is when he came you know what i mean like so wow. yeah so it's crazy i mean he killed himself in february and and the september before that is when he was doing his like goodbyes to everybody i think like he would like fly to this fly to that and, like go sit you know visit this person that person this person that person he came to my house for three days and and every morning we would wake up at 30 in the morning together he and i and go ride the rat rod like out of 64 pickup truck that we thrash all the way there and just he's like dude i love the rat i love the rat and like he was so cool man like and we would just talk and shoot the shit and just have fun man and then and then when that happened i was like dude i'm never gonna stop drinking coffee you know what I'm like i'm never like, this is just for my guy yeah that was it. yeah man rest in peace dave nero yeah, Dave Mayer, man, baddest dude ever. Uh, what about your music stuff? You do that regularly? 
Yeah, I still do it regularly, and it's very important to me. So I like, I, I've like skipped out on like jobs to go to open mic because open mic's so important to me. Like, like it's it's something that makes me nervous, like real nervous, like I'm gonna ride. Mm-hmm. That feeling. Yeah. And, and then when I get on the, on the stage and play guitar and like and ri- and sing or whatever I'm doing, singing, rapping playing guitar, whatever it is, if I'm playing and and I do a good job, it's like hitting a big trick. It's like, yes, that was, feels good. Great. And then, and then you won, you know what I mean? And then then like, when you're done, you're like, oh, it's like adrenaline. Like, it's crazy how good it feels. And then like, that's, but when you mess up, the difference is you're totally, you're totally fine. It doesn't matter. You just (sighs) get up, you just get up the stage, you bring your guitar and you're like, oh, that sucks. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. And, and you don't even get hurt. So it's like, but it's embarrassing as shit, but it's like, that's kind of cool payoff. Like I'm down, I'm down to risk that. I'm down to risk embarrassed, but I'm not down to get hurt. You know what I mean? Like I'm down, like physically hurt anymore. I'm like, I don't want to get physically hurt, but I'm down to get embarrassed. Yeah. So like that's what it is. Yeah. It's like, if you do a crappy job, you're, you're just going to get embarrassed. Yeah. That makes total sense. Uh, Rick, when I did a podcast with Rick Thorne and he talked about comedy the same exact way. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I would like to do comedy someday. Like, I think that would be fun. You know, I, I, I don't know that I will. I probably won't. Maybe though. I don't know. You know, when I was a little kid, this guy tried to get me to do it. He's like, dude, you're really funny. TJ. You should do it. You should do it. And I was like, eh, I don't know. So I, I do enough stuff. You know what I mean? I don't, yeah. I don't need to do it. Yeah. Let's see, I, I like I like doing my 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 open mic session, whatever it is. Like, you get two songs, right? Sometimes three, and I'm like cracking jokes and telling funny shit in between every time. So mm-hmm. that's kind of like how I do it anyway. So yeah, I, I, that's my stand-up comedy anyway. You know, I like it. Yeah, it's just it was it's cool to parallel like comedy and music being similar to BMX <clears throat> in a way. It is, dude. It's 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 real. It's it's it, it like acting or music or anything like that is the same thing. It's the same exact thing because it, you you are scared and you're nervous and you go and do the the deed whatever it is. And then it's like, ah, man, that felt great. You know what I mean? Like, yep. that was awesome, you know? So, so yeah, it's the same exact thing. Like, Yeah, it makes total sense. Um, what else What else do you do normally? I mean, you do the Starbucks every day. What's, what's every day? I go every day, and then I either bring the dogs home if I bring them with me, or I, I just come home or whatever, do a bunch of email stuff if I have to. I do voiceovers if I have to here in the studio. I do the voiceovers for that seat, that that show for this week or whatever. Um, and then when I do those voiceovers or whatever, I get, I get that stuff done, done. And then I have a bunch of rental homes here in Vegas um, that I have rented out all over the valley. And so there's always something that needs to get fixed or get worked on or whatever. So I always line that up with everybody and, and try to get that going. And uh, I, fixing people's homes and fixing people's things and making sure everybody's dialed. And then if I'm not doing that, then I'm shopping for new houses, new single family homes and new Airbnbs, whatever I'm doing like for that stuff. So I do all that stuff too. So it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's a lucrative business. I love it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I do a lot of real estate stuff and then and on the side. And then if I'm not doing all those things, then I'm just at lunch with the boys. Nice. You know, we go to lunch every day, me and Kyle, my friend Kyle, and we hang every day and do the shit. And... Hell yeah. Oh. That's sick. Uh, I was also wondering if you had any plans to bring back the hanging with labs thing that you were doing a couple years ago. You know what, man? I, I do. I, I am going to do that. Like, I, I did it for a long time, but like, I did it not for a real long time, but like I did it because I was hanging out with so many people and, and I wasn't doing very much, very many shows in a, in a year. Like, mm-hmm. 
Like I was only doing one to two seasons a year, but now I'm doing four. So it's so heavy, the workload, you know what I mean? Yeah. So after COVID, like, like COVID hit and you couldn't hang out with nobody. So that was kind of weird. And then like, I wasn't hanging with nobody cool like Jimmy Johnson or any, you know, crazy dudes that I had on there. Like some of the baddest dudes ever, you know? Yep. And I Laird Hamilton at my house once, but I was like, eh, I don't really like want to do it right now because he's here with Gabby and like, I would love to do Gabby too. And they, they got to be Reese, but they, they were here, like, walking the backyard. It's just not the time, you know? So you just have to, like, it's, you know, be respectful of people's yeah. time, figure it out what, what's what. So, But I had some heavy hitters, man, come through here, and it would have been awesome to do it. So I feel like I need to do it again. Yeah, those are sweet because they're just, like, a quick little thing where you're talking to people. And I don't know, you, I thought it was cool. You just set, set the phone up or whatever and yeah, chat yeah. for a few minutes. That was it. That's it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Pretty sweet. And, I mean, if you did bring it back, it'd be cool, but obviously, whatever, you know? <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, on that note, I mean, I'm I'm to the end of the things I had to talk about. What, do you, what are you stoked on in BMX when you pay attention these days? Um, I mean, I'm stoked on seeing some of the old school tricks go down and still matter. Like, when Kevin Praza does that stuff, I'm like, dude that that is bmx to me you know yeah. i love that that is like that's the roots and i love it um and i that those brazilian kids um <clears throat> when i watch the brazilian kids go on their jumps oh yeah that is bmx to me <clears throat> and dude those dudes those are they're cut from the same cloth like we would be real good friends with nasty me then the the nasty would have the best sessions ever on those jumps that they have. Yeah. Like I just picture like those days. I'm like, dude, I can't imagine being in Brazil with those guys. Yeah. In my and Fuzzy's prime, what we and Fuzzy and, and nasty and like how big we would have went with those man that jump those jumps were so badass, dude. Yeah. Shout out to Gustavo and uh, Leandro. Dude, Leandro is sick. Yeah, and always smiling. Always happy. Yeah, he's like Kevin, just always yeah. smiling, always. Dumb. Happy to be. Yeah. Happy to be there. Oh well, on that note, man, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but where can people find what you're up to online? Um, I'm, I'm, I, I really don't know. I mean, Instagram is always good. That's at TJ Lavin. It's just basic, real, real simple, and then uh. Uh, MTV stuff you could look on there Paramount Plus we do MTV Paramount Plus right now Paramount Plus has has uh, all stars world championships so the world championships is like people from all the different countries and the different hubs all getting together and, and fighting it out for the world champion that's going to be pretty badass so that's on every 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 uh, Wednesday night I believe so nice. yeah that's what's going on man that's what's that's what's up with me in the meantime the CBS, uh, which is the Challenge USA, will be coming back on as well. I'm getting ready to go film that, so that'll be awesome. Nice. Where's that one at? That one will be, I can't say, but that one will be, it'll be off. The, the setting is stunning. I'll just set, I'll tell you that because I've filmed there before, and it is incredible. Like, some of the most beautiful landscapes I've ever seen. I'm, I'm very excited that we get to go back. Nice. Well, hell yeah, man. I appreciate your time and everybody. Make sure you go check out what TJ's got going on. And uh, yeah, thank you. No, thank you, my friend. Take care of yourself, man. Have a good one. Yes. Have a good All night, right. everyone. Call me anytime, man. Later, bro.